to somebody who's collapsed in my workplace. So I'm gonna get some of my kit ready, particularly my PPE. When I first approach, I haven't put anything on, I have already used my alcohol gel, I can see my uh, colleague has collapsed, so I'm already gonna stop and check for dangers. Because I can see some blood on their face, I'm gonna put some PPE on. So I'm gonna start with my apron. So we put our disposable apron on. So make sure we've got that, that's tied up. Because I'm gonna to have to get in close, I'm also gonna put a surgical face mask on, so making sure I'm covered up. So that's covered, and I'm gonna put some gloves on because there's bodily fluid. I might consider some eye protection as well. So I've done all of this before I've got any closer to my patient. Now I'm approaching my patient, my gut reaction is they're not responsive, but I'm gonna check by going through AVPU. So the first thing I'm gonna see is if they're alert. Hello, my name's Jason, I'm the first aider. Hello, they're not responding to alertness, so I'm gonna see if they respond to voice, so I'm gonna try and stimulate the brain. Open your eyes! And I'm just looking to see if there's any flickering, there's nothing. They're not responding to voice, now I'm gonna see if they're responding to pain. I'm just gonna tap you on the shoulders. Still no response. I'm classifying this person as unresponsive, so I'm gonna give a shout for help. Help! Someone help me in the training room! There is no response. I'm going to get down on my knees. I'm now going to check their airway. So the first thing I'm going to do is look inside the mouth. If there's anything in there, I'm going to use postural drainage to make sure it comes out. As long as the airway is clear, I can then carry on with my full head tilt, making sure there's nothing in there. I can then do a chin lift. Now I've got the airway open, I'm gonna now assess for breathing for no more than 10 seconds. So I'm looking at the abdomen. I might have to come down lower to look, listen and feel for no more than 10 seconds. This patient is not breathing, so I'm gonna leave them so I can phone 999, get an ambulance. I'm also gonna get the AED and come back or internally free, free, free to get security. If I had someone else, I would have asked them to go and get the defib, and I would have started chest compressions on my patient whilst they went and collect the equipment. But now the equipment's arrived, I'm gonna ask the other person to carry on chest compressions. I'm gonna make sure the chest is bare and then I can go through looking for perspiration, looking for patches, pacemaker, piercings, pendants, or any hair. Make sure it's nice and clear. Now I'm gonna get my AED open. I get it switched on early. So the AED is switched on early. Looking at my pads, one pad will go just by the right collarbone. The other pad, is gonna go underneath the left armpit, underneath the left breast, so right on the right side there. Right now the pads are in, I'm gonna to listen to my machine. Analyzing heart rhythm, do not <laughs> so touch the patient. So you can't touch the patient. Shock, advance. So they must be in Charging. VF. They must Stay be in clear ventricular of fibrillation. So, wait for the light, Deliver, shot, watch the patient now, clear, the top, up, middle, now, bottom, shocking. Body would shake. Four. I'm now gonna start, start chest compressions, and I'm gonna keep this going for two minutes. After two minutes, I'm gonna ask somebody else to come in and take over for me. And when that other person comes in to take over, I can then uh, have a rest. Whilst I'm doing my chest compressions, the heel of my hand is in the center of the chest. I'm pushing down five to six centimeters at a rate of 100 to 120 per minute. Fast forward to another two minutes. I'm gonna stop because the defib has told me to. Analyze, it says no shock advised. 
straight back on the chest. I'm not gonna stop. There's only three occasions when I stop my CPR because somebody medical told me to stop. The person is obviously breathing or I'm too exhausted to carry on. So hopefully it's gonna be that middle one. Once they come back around and they're breathing normally, I'm okay to leave them on their back, but if they're then snoring, so their tongue is obstructing, I'm gonna place them in the recovery position. And when I put them in the recovery position, the arm nearest to me will come out to the side, the other arm will come across, their knee will come up, I'll use the knee and their hand to roll them towards me, and as they come down, the knee comes up at right angles, the arm is down low, and the mouth must be pointing downwards to create drainage. And once I'm in that position, we can then wait for the emergency services. Happy with that? Yeah. Yeah. Any questions on that, guys? Okay, was that helpful? Yeah.